When people turn to the Bible as a way of refuting or uh, condemning homosexuality, they usually go to either Leviticus or to Romans, and sometimes both. Other places as well, but those are the two key go-to sites, aren't they, really? But they're quite interesting differences between them, isn't there? I mean, Leviticus appears against, uh, uh, you know, the prohibition against homosexuality in Leviticus appears in a list of other prohibitions to do with shellfish and mixed fabrics and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and it's, it's presented just as a kind of order, as a kind of divine command, really. Don't do that thing. And of course, by, by the time you get to Romans, something different's in place. When uh, when Paul addresses the Romans, he doesn't just say, don't do that man-on-man -man thing because God says so. He says, or at least in some translations, he says, God doesn't want you to do that because it's against nature, he says. Against nature. It's unclear to me, and I can't get it from any of the translations, whether he means it's against God's nature or against nature, as we would understand it today. I guess there's a lot of slippage between those two ideas, isn't there, really? Uh, but either way, it gives a reason for it, you know what I mean? It isn't just about a command, it's about a command with a reason. And that, that thing about God slowly, not just becoming accountable, but becoming accountable to nature, and simultaneously becoming uh, kind of absorbed within nature almost, is something that continues in a lot of the writing later on, like people like Francis Bacon, who kind of set the tone for some of the scientific revolution that followed. And in some of, a lot of his writing, it's, it's, it's steeped in God talk, but it's also steeped in nature talk. And, that, um, and sometimes it's hard to tell whether he's talking about God or talking about nature. There's a... Um, the responsibility, if you like, is shifting from, the, from a, a divine and unknowable authority external to oneself and um, and completely opaque to any kind of inquiry. It's shifting from that to the same authority, but couched not in that um, distant opaque figure, but in something that is at least becoming transparent in Francis Bacon. The figure of nature is kind of spread out and can be opened up and examined, uh, you know, perhaps in a spirit of, um, of wonder or awe or or something like that, something approaching religious content, but perhaps not, perhaps in other ways. In fact, in, in some of Bacon's writing, his, 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 his approach to nature is almost um, rapacious. But, um, but yeah, that, there's a big difference there, isn't there? About why you would condemn something. And as soon as you start moving toward Paul, which you kind of have to, don't you, if you're religious, because the Leviticus is part of the Old Covenant, and you're not supposed to mention the Old Covenant. It's quite interesting actually, isn't it? Because of course some Christians, and I'm including I, Emanuela here, um, are quite happy to mention Old Covenant stuff, Leviticus. Until you say, well actually, until you mention it, or you mention some of the problems to do with mixed fabrics or seashells, and then suddenly it's, oh yeah, but that's Old Covenant, we don't talk about that anymore, we don't need to think about that. They'll talk about it until um, until someone calls them on it, and then they'll say, no, no, that's, that's all coming. But that, that shift from Old Covenant to New Covenant is an interesting one. And relying on New Covenant, on Romans, is essentially saying that um, God and nature are approaching one another at that point. You look to nature. But if you're going to look to nature, then you have to look at the natural world and naturalistic explanations, because that's what's being alluded to. You know, if Paul says it's against nature, that's a naturalistic explanation of why homosexuality is wrong and should be condemned. It's an incorrect naturalistic explanation, and other kinds of naturalistic explanations, superior ones, have taken its place. But that's what it is. So, if you're of the New Covenant, and your reasons for, for dismissing or condemning homosexuality lie in Paul, then you're essentially a naturalist. You're deploying naturalist philosophy. And you really should see that through to its end point, follow that truth wherever it leads, I think.